Good afternoon. It is a Wednesday afternoon, um, October 6th. Can't believe it. Um, Sam and I are doing a little bit of traveling this week and we'll be going to Florida soon to spend uh, our birthdays with our son and our daughter-in-law, Caroline, and our grand puppy, Milo. So I hope you're having a wonderful week. Um, as we continue on in our study with Joyce Meyer, we are going to talk about receiving and giving grace today. So I want to read, um, we're going to start in Colossians 2, 6, if you want to go ahead. Um, actually, we're not going to start in Colossians 2, 6. We're going to start in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. So if you can grab your Bible and go there with me, that would be wonderful. And then we will um, read those two, two verses and then we're going to have prayer. So as we read Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and, not, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. All right, and then let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father Jesus, thank you, God, for another day, Lord. Um, Thank you, God, for beautiful weather that you've given us, Jesus, and um, how you have blessed us, Lord. I just thank you, God. I just, I pray that I can always say um, so many things every time I come to you in prayer that I'm thankful for. Father Jesus, you're so good to me. You're so good to my family. Thank you, Jesus, for it. I pray, Lord, um, now that you would go through this uh, Bible study, God, go go before me, Lord, that what you'd have for us, Lord, would be... Um, just what is needed for this day. Thank you, Jesus, and I love you. Amen. So, oh my gosh, I absolutely loved this chapter, chapter 16. It's called Receive and Give Grace. Uh, she has a quote at the very top of this uh, chapter that's from John Newton. It says, I am not what I ought to be. I am not what I wish to be. I am not what I hope to be. But by the grace of God, I am not what I was. Isn't that so good? I mean, I think we might even need to say that again. It says, I am not what I ought to be. I am not what I wish to be. I am not what I hope to be. But by the grace of God, I am not what I was. Um, and and I just I want to read some little area some different areas of this chapter because it is so good. She says, several of Paul's letters to the churches begin with the greeting, grace and peace be multiplied to you. That is not something we would likely say today to greet another person, but it is a powerful statement that we need to understand. We all want peace, yet we cannot have it unless we understand grace. I tried for years to have peace with no success, and it was because the only thing I knew about grace was that I was saved by it. Um, she says, by God's grace, my sins have been forgiven, but I didn't understand that I needed the same grace for, for my daily living that I needed for my salvation. Receiving Christ as my Savior is, the one, is one thing, but living for him is quite another. It seemed to me that living the Christian life took a lot of work and effort, and no matter how hard I tried, I always failed. Isn't that true? I was frustrated daily because I wanted to be what God's word instructed me to be, and yet I didn't seem to have the power to behave accordingly. Talk about having a, a bad day. That was a story of my life. Then I finally saw it. God's word teaches us to live for Jesus the same way we received him. See Colossians 2, 6. We are saved by grace and we are to live by grace. If we don't, then we will never have any peace. And without peace, we will never have joy. And I want a joyful life, don't you? And I need peace. We need peace. It says, um, Colossians 2, 6. Let's read that if you can go there with me too. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Let's read that again. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. And then she defines grace. 
Grace is defined as God's undeserved favor and as the power and ability that is needed for us to do what he asks us to do. God would never tell us to do something and leave us without the ability to do it. His grace saves us and then it carries us successfully through our journey with him. Grace is available at all times, but it is received only through faith. In other words, we need to ask for it and trust that we have it as a gift from God. And I love that she says we need to ask for it. Um, my life was changed forever when I found that God's grace would change me if I trusted him for it. And it will do the same thing for you. Our testimony can be the same as John Newton's depicted in the quote at the beginning of the chapter. We are not what we want to be or what we wish we were or hoped we were. But by the grace of God, we are not what we used to be. We are being changed in his image daily by his grace. I also think truly now, though, as we see in our world that so many people are filled with um, high anxiety and depression and and anger. I feel, um, you know, especially uh, working in the healthcare business, um, we see a lot of patients that come in and they are angry. Um, and I think I think when when people come in with that, it kind of rubs off on us, doesn't it? Sometimes, and then we sometimes forget to give each other grace the same grace that we pray for every day. God, give me grace, give me favor, give me mercy, right? We also have to remember that we have to give it out just as we would like to receive it. I think sometimes um, we forget that, and I've talked about this before. Um, usually, as I come into my office, or, or even when I walk into the church um, on Sundays and Wednesdays, how is my how is my attitude when I walk into the church? Is it something that is soft and kind and, and do I have a smile or am I coming in with that attitude? And, and I hope not. I hope not because um, that attitude spreads very quickly, especially when it's um, frustrated or angry or, or all those other things. So I hope that we can come in and, and be gracious and be merciful and, and um, loving and kind, just like our Savior is to us. Um, I want to read here, it says, when we are fully aware that God continually gives us undeserved favor, how can we respond in any other way than with gratitude? God wants us to be thankful, but we won't if we think our good works earn God's blessings. Gratitude comes when we don't deserve the gifts we are given by God, but that he gives them anyway because he is good. Always remember that grace is undeserved favor and power, and it is available to you in whatever quantity to you need. The Bible says in James 4, 6, that we have grace and more grace to help us overcome our evil tendencies. Think about it, not just grace, but grace and more grace. Oh, and I wanted to, I want to read that, and I also want to go back, and I want to read Zechariah 4, 7. So let's go to James 4, 6. James... I have this. Hebrews, James. Here we go. Here we go. James 4, 6. Um, it says, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace, but giveth grace unto the humble. So let's let's keep our humble selves in check, right? Um, I wanted to read this other thing. It says, grace conquers mountains. The prophet Zechariah told the people who were concerned about how they were going to finish the temple. They had been instructed to build that they were to cry out grace, grace to it. See Zechariah 4, 7, a mountain of human obstacles was in their way, but grace removed them all. Your mountains will also be moved by the grace of God if you will depend on God's power rather than your own ability to do what needs to be done. So we can ask God for that power and the grace that he can give us, right? We want his grace anyway. Our grace um, is nothing compared to the grace of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's look Zechariah 4, 7. It says, Who art thou, O great mountain? 
Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Um, I think I... Uh, All right, I love, 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 love that. Then he ha then she has us go, I'm sorry. She has us go to Hebrews 4, 3, and 10. So we wanna go there. Well, let's go Hebrews uh, 4. And we were just in James. So we wanna go back. All right, let's find Hebrews here. Hebrews 4, 6. I'm sorry, Hebrews 4, 3 and 10. All right, Hebrews 4, 3 says, For which we have believed, do enter, do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. So that was Hebrews 4, 3. And then we want to read 10. For he that is entered into his rest, he also, also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. So as the writer of Hebrews teaches us that when that we enter God's rest through believing, Entering God rest is not a rest from our labor, but it is a rest in labor. Entering God's rest doesn't mean we go take a nap. It means we rest internally, no matter what is going on externally. And listen here, we need that. We can, we can do all we need to do, but we do it while simultaneously resting in God's grace. God's rest is truly supernatu a supernatural place that can only be understood by those who have experienced it. Uh, and listen, we need God's rest, um, especially as we're doing the work of the Lord. Um, here are three ways that we can recognize that grace is missing. And I love these. I've got to share this before we um, wrap up today. She says, when we feel frustrated, that means we are into what the Bible calls works of the flesh, what, hap what happens when we try to do God's job in our own energy without him. So when you feel frustrated, stop and immediately ask for grace and even more grace if needed. Receive it by faith and let God lighten your load. When we are exhausted and have a headache from worry, we are desperately, we desperately need to stop and ask and receive grace. We des um, grace leads us to peace, not to worry and exhaustion. Then she says, when we feel like giving up, we need another dose of God's grace. His power enables us to keep going even when nothing seems to be happening. So God is always working, isn't he? He's always, um, um, she says then too, I encourage you to study and focus on God's love and grace towards you. And I can promise you that you will change. It won't necessarily all come quickly, but it will come little by little and one day, you will barely remember the person that you used to be. You know, the one you spent so many bad days with. We, uh, we live with ourselves all the time. And when we are not receiving and giving grace, we are hard to live with. And believe me, we are. Um, uh, I did write just one little prayer here before we close today. And I hope this chapter helped you on grace. It surely did help me. I said, Father Jesus, forgive me for just hurrying through the tasks you have given so amazingly. So, I'm sorry, let me start over. Father Jesus, forgive me for just hurrying through the tasks you have so amazingly given to me. I treat them so lightly. The things of you are eternal, Father Jesus. They are eternal. Forgive me. I love you. I hope this message on grace has helped you today. Um, I hope that we, we give grace like Jesus so freely gives us. He so freely gives us that. And I hope we can stay um, humble under him um, so that we can be the people that he wants us to be. And we can have his heart and his voice and his eyes. Um, I always speak of that, that I'd rather be, you know, the Julie that puts Jesus out there first instead of, instead of Julie. Anyway, it is Wednesday. I hope you have an amazing day. 
I love you.